Hi everyone. Hope you all are safe and doing well. We at Mirai Asset Mutual Fund are glad to launch our new fund offer of Mirai Asset Multi Asset Allocation Fund. So before I delve deeper into our fund's proposed strategy, let us try to understand the need and importance of asset allocation for an investor. As an investor, we know that each asset class comes with its own unique set of likely returns potential as well as volatility. Equity as an asset class has the potential to deliver superior returns over the long term. However, it can be unpredictable in the short term. This unpredictability tends to influence the investor behavior. Gold on the other hand is considered as a safe haven asset and also acts as a hedge against inflation. Like equity, it can also be very cyclical. However, given the return potential over the longer term, it cannot be ignored. Debt, as we all know, provides lower but relatively stable returns. So with this unique nature of each asset class, let's try to find a solution to this jigsaw puzzle over the course of this presentation. Asset allocation in our view tries to solve three key things. One, volatility, second, returns, and third, it gives participation. As mentioned earlier, different asset classes tend to exhibit different level of volatility. Daily returns of equity, debt, and gold since April 2008 indicate that the level of return divergence and volatility. Clearly, equity and gold have been more volatile, while debt has exhibited relatively lower volatility or return divergence. Now, let's look at how does a combination of these three asset classes behave for the same time frame. Interestingly, a combination of 65% equities, 20% in debt, and 15% in gold has displayed relatively lower volatility and return divergence as compared to standalone equity or gold. Now let's try to understand the return divergence over a 15 year period. We tried to study the return ranges of equity, debt, gold and combination of these three uh, based on three year rolling returns since April 2008. Again, the takeaway is same. Equity returns have been spread all over. More than one third of the times, the three year returns in equities have been in the range of 10% and 16%. Gold too has shown a similar trend with return spread across different ranges. Notably, the instance of negative returns have been higher in gold as compared to equity. However, for debt, while the returns have been in the tight range, suggesting that debt returns are less volatile. Finally, if we look at the return ranges for a combination of these three asset classes, the returns were less divergent and concentrated. As you can see from the extreme right chart, about two thirds of the times returns were concentrated in the range of 8% and 16%. We also tried to understand the performance of three asset classes in different market phases. During bear phase, equity corrected by 17.8%, whereas gold and debt gained by 19.4 and 13.6% respectively. Essentially, debt and gold have acted as a hedge in the bear phase. In sideways market, equity, debt, and gold returns were in a narrow range. On the other hand, during bull phase, equity generated 22% return while gold and debt gave low single digit returns. Interestingly, the combination has generated less volatile returns. While assets like equity and gold can deliver higher returns over the long term, it's also important to understand the magnitude of downside risk <coughs> or drawdown and the number of days they take to recover from such downside. During fair bear phase, equity corrected the most followed by gold while debt gave the least negative returns. Equity took the longest time to recover with 221 days during the April 2008 to November 2009 bear period. Interestingly, during sideways phases, while the equities and gold witnessed similar level of correction, gold took as long as 670 days to recover from the downside as compared to equity, which took only 103 days to recover. We witnessed similar trend during bull phase as well. However, as seen earlier, the combination of these asset classes witnessed lower downside and also recovered faster as compared to equities. Now let's look at the correlation between different asset classes. Essentially, asset classes like equity, debt, gold 
share a weak or negative correlation with each other that is they tend to behave differently in different market environments for example equity and gold share a negative correlation similarly equity and debt also share a negative correlation therefore a combination of these asset classes can provide a relatively smoother investment experience to the investors as you know each year the same asset classes may or may not perform over the past 15 years as seen in our analysis equity has top performer in 6 years gold in 7 years and debt in 2 years hence the winners keep changing and it's very difficult to predict which asset class will do better next year a multi asset framework tends to follow a middle path and seeks to navigate through different market phases now having looked at the need and importance of the asset allocation let's shift our focus towards our new fund offer that is mere asset multi asset allocation fund by definition fund invests in at least 3 asset classes with a minimum of 10% in each of them in a way fund seeks to provide growth potential of equity stability of debt and safety cushion from gold in times of heightened risk aversion in our fund we propose to have asset allocation as follows uh, the fund will maintain a minimum of gross 65% in equity and equity related instruments 10 to 25% in debt in securities 10 to 25% in commodities including gold silver and exchange traded commodity derivatives additionally the fund also has the provision to invest in reits and invits up to 10% and in foreign equities up to 15% now let's look at the portfolio strategy for each asset class the equity portion of the scheme will be in the mix of pure equity and arbitrage opportunities with a minimum of 65% of the overall portfolio net equity levels will be managed dynamically within the range of 40% and 75% based on the internal asset allocation framework accordingly if the net equity allocation is below 65% the residual will be invested in arbitrage opportunities so that the overall equity allocation is 65% or higher further stock selection will be blend of a top down as well as bottom up approach the equity portfolio will be diversified across sectors and market capitalizations however given the investor profile we intend to have a portfolio with a large cap bias the fund will use a combination of two parameters to determine the net equity allocation first is price to book which is an absolute valuation parameter it is more suitable to gauge valuation of asset heavy businesses and financial companies it anchors the model and prevents it from sinking to extreme in times of euphoria and distress in the markets when the price to book is higher the net equity allocation should be decreased and vice versa this parameter carries a relatively higher weightage in the overall framework uh, second is spread of bond yield over earnings yield earnings yield is nothing but the inverse of price to earning a higher spread indicates fixed income is more attractive than equities and vice versa uh, when the spread is higher that is bond yield is more than the earnings yield net equity allocation should be decreased and vice versa this parameter carries a relatively lower weightage in the overall uh, framework while the net equity allocation will be mostly driven by the above framework the fund manager also will have the flexibility to fine tune the net equity allocation within the range of plus or minus 5% based on uh, fundamental as well as macro factors uh, for example if the model shows equity allocation of 45% uh, the fund manager can choose uh, to keep equity allocation between 40% and 50% of the portfolio while doing so the fund manager can consider many factors like interest rates volatility capital flow direction rbi data points currency flows and many such other factors the fund's net equity allocation will be largely driven by the model but only during extraordinary situations when the fund manager considers appropriate he may take an input over the over and above the model equity position let's say events like election budget or some six sigma event if it happens are some of the examples of the situations average one year three year and five year rolling returns and standard deviation since august 2007 has been shown in these charts notably the volatility or standard deviation for the benchmarks that is 65% s&p bse 200 tri 20% nifty short duration debt index 10% gold and 5% silver has been relatively lower 
as compared to S&P BSE 200 TRI and Nifty 50 TRI. At the same time, average the rolling returns of the benchmark has been closer to this equity indices, particularly over three and five year period. To conclude, a multi-asset approach strives to achieve relatively lower volatility than equity. The debt portion of the scheme will mainly follow a buy and hold strategy and investments will be made across debt instruments like corporate debt, GSEC, SDL and money market instruments etc. Debt portfolio will maintain a short to medium duration based on directional movement of the interest rates. At the current juncture, the debt portfolio duration can be around uh, two and a half to three and a half years. Gold is considered a safe haven and acts as a hedge against inflation and may help in potential wealth creation. Therefore, core part of the commodity investment will be in gold with tactical allocation to silver and other ETCDs. Uh, tactical allocation may be uh, made based on fundamental factors or momentum of different commodities. The scheme also has the provision to invest in REITs and INVITs which adds flavor of a distinct asset class. The scheme also has the flexibility to invest in foreign equity with a view to capitalize on the themes and opportunities which are not available in India. The investment in foreign equity, however, will be based on relative attractiveness of a foreign equity versus domestic equity. For majority of the time, equity is likely to have a meaningful allocation compared to other asset classes in this fund. So it is important to understand our philosophy towards equity portfolio building. The way we go about uh, building the portfolio and selecting the stocks is largely as follows. For equity uh, stock selection, we use uh, BMV criteria which is business management and valuation. Uh, first, uh, if we were to invest in any company, we look at few parameters like uh, let's say top line growth. So at least it should be double digit and visibility should be for the next five to seven years. Uh, secondly, profitability is also important. So there we use a parameter like ROCE. So post tax ROCE should be at least 12%, pre tax 15%. If not now, there should be visibility within the one year that company should reach uh, to these levels. Uh, thirdly, I think the management quality while it is subjective, but we do look at few things like let's say balance sheet structure. It has to be at par, you know, with other companies within the sector. We also look at historical capital allocation, how it has been done. Uh, thirdly, I think coming to valuation, uh, while you know we can talk on price to earnings, price to book or EV by beta, but to the extent possible we use uh, DCF which is discounted cash flow methodology for valuing the company. So as long as you know value which we derive from DCF is more than the uh, current prevailing market price, uh, there is a chance that you know that stock or company can be a part of a, a portfolio. Uh, also you know while you know equity investing is a growth investing but again you know we don't buy growth at any price. So to that extent, we use a strategy of uh, growth up to a reasonable price, uh, which is also you know commonly known as uh, GARP, growth at a reasonable price. Coming to portfolio building, uh, again you know we use uh, core and tactical approach. While the portfolio uh, will be made up of you know multiple uh, sectors across the market caps. But in terms of actually uh, managing the portfolio to, to the extent possible 80-85% of you know the stocks or names uh, will be constant from a 2 to 3 year uh, basis while the remaining 15% is where we tweak many a times you know the stock prices move uh, you know without you know any fundamental reason either on the upside or downside. So to that extent we do some uh, tactical changes so that's the largely strategy uh, on the uh, equity front. Uh, since the fund will invest a minimum of 65% in equity and equity related instruments, it will qualify uh, for equity taxation. Any rebalancing within the fund will not entail any tax implications to the fund or the investor. On a risk return profile scale, the fund is positioned between uh, Mirai Asset Balance Advantage Fund and uh, Mirai Asset Aggressive Hybrid Fund. The fund may be suitable for the first time uh, investors or existing equity investors with a time horizon of uh, 3 years and above. Investors seeking lower volatility than equities with a reasonable return expectations uh, may consider investing in this fund. Investors who are seeking to participate across uh, diverse asset classes uh, may also invest in this fund. The fund seeks to offer six key benefits like one diversification across asset classes uh, through a single fund. It's hassle free, uh, does away with the hassle of predicting which asset class will do well and allows the combination which uh, may work for you. 
gives risk adjusted returns uh, basically seeks to provide a uh, better investment experience uh, has a potential for alpha generation uh, seeks to generate alpha through actively uh, managed equity portfolio uh, there will be automatic rebalancing portfolio will be dynamically rebalanced on a regular basis based on the underlying uh, framework and lastly tax efficient returns and so no tax no tax on rebalancing within the fund and also equity taxation on redemption uh, so here are uh, the nfo details for your reference thank you Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.